That's all good. I ain't nothing to it. Don't be afraid. Do me a countdown. You sent the link? Nah, we live. Peace, family. Welcome to the Man to Man Show where we talk like guys. I'm your host, Steve Jones. And I'm here with my good brother, Mr. 19, 19 Keys. Keys. Come on, man. Don't play with me like First that. First off, congratulations to you, black man. For the two-year anniversary of high-level right, conversations. Congratulations to us. Oh, well, to us, to the team, man. Shout out to Solomon, B. Mechi. Shout out to Luna and everybody. It's been two years since high-level conversations hit the market and elevated the culture. You know, Keaton Beasley was the first episode, man. I, before we, you know, get into the man to man, tell me what's um one of your favorite episodes on high-level conversation. Oh man, uh, it's probably gonna be one of the next episodes. Yeah, you know, you know the one we got coming hey, here Saturday. Now hold on, wait. Before you even say that, right? I told him, Mechie, the next episode that's dropping is my favorite, my personal favorite episode in the high level conversation history. And that's speak volume because we don't we on season four. But this next episode, y'all do not want to miss it. I guarantee you. But go ahead, you can continue. <laughs> that's 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 a lot to say. I'm telling you the truth. You did. So, um, yeah, this next one is a it's a heavy contender, but we got, I ain't gonna lie, we got three in the vault already, and each one of them is is jam packed. It'd be hard for me to say my favorite because each one I get a lot out of. I'm gonna say what I do like out of a good guest. Mm. Um, it's when they come prepared. A good guest comes with that energy. They got something yeah. to say. They're not just waiting to be interviewed, right? They come in with something on their chest. They want to make sure that they impart some of that wisdom and that knowledge and that energy. Even our last one was really good. Robert Grant came with energy. Oh, yeah, Robert Grant was on there. I'm going to give y'all, I'll never tell about too many guests that's coming, but Dr. Wesley, amazing one. We talked about the Black Anunnaki's, the Sumerians. We talked about Alien Washing. Um... We talked about the black aliens, and, and, and it's, that all ties into, like, the Nation of Islam doctrine. So you're going to find out a lot that you didn't know. Woo! <coughs> <coughs> Woo! Thank you. Yeah, you know, before the next episode that dropped, you know, my favorite one used to be the one that I was on, featured on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm going to be biased in that. But no, nah, I just said, man, what you want to get into tonight, man? What you want to talk about, man? Um, I put a few, a lot of topics out here tonight, man. It was a I'm lot sending of, out this link. It was a lot of things going on this week, for sure. So, I want to talk about something real quick. Yeah. So, I want to talk about how you develop this this power real quick. Because you, you know, like I know, I've been having powers for a long time. You know what I'm saying? Like... Before you ever seen the superhero, you seen me. Right? All right. You just you know, we we'll leave it at that. Are you talking uh, to me? Silence is acceptance. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking to you. Before you ever seen a, a meteor man, before you seen a black panther, it was keys. I always had this intuition, this psychic ability, right? To know things, to do things, to just show up in these extreme ways. And I'm going to reveal to you <laughs> <laughs> how I had some of these powers. Come on, man. Oh, you know what was, 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 was interesting as well? I went to go see um, Andre 3000. Mm. He was performing. He did like an experimental freestyle, light laser performance. It was interesting. It was like dog barking. There was binaural beats, flutes. Band oh, playing, really lasers, huh? crystals. There was bleachers. There was a Ferris wheel in the back. It was, it was an interesting experience. Mm. Not gonna lie, it wasn't the most comfortable because they had like these bleachers set up, and I hate bleachers just because they uncomfortable to sit in. But it was a dope experience. Um, it 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 really kind of get to the. He said one thing. He said. Only thing I can promise you tonight is this is going to be an honest experience. And he thanked the crowd because he like, I don't know what energy you go give me, so I'm not sure what type of show it's going to be. Mm. Right? And so he, like he made a music <laughs> based on just the vibes of what was there. He was like, he was like, this ain't sacred. If you got something you want to say, say it. If you want to add to the vibes, you want to yell out something. You know what I mean? He was very like open like that. And he said, it was funny, he was like, I don't know how I arrived here. I ain't know I was going to be the flute nigga. <laughs> yeah. 
But he said, you know, sometimes you got a journey that calls you to certain things, and, and this was his. But um, that's something that I think I think I'm gonna reserve my my review of it fully. Now you, I mean, but you done kicked it, it off, man. It was an interesting experience. <laughs> um, I would have loved for him to play the album full through. The freestyle was cool. Um, I feel like it's a show you got to be on some shrooms or high or something mm. to really be like in tune with it because you know now, you bunched in with a bunch of people and really you just want to be vibing like this even like the visual experience is cool but it's something you really want to just tap into yeah, that's what I was going to ask you because I know like you said y'all was sitting on the bleacher or whatnot and me personally like I know I couldn't listen to a flute con mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying a flute album sitting on the bleacher I had to be like yeah, somewhere in nature, somewhere you know. Yeah, the to setup that. didn't really make sense for I think the content. That was just my mm. whole thing. Um, I got this hoodie there. You know what I mean? Mm. It's some nice hoodie. Um, I like that. Um, but yeah, shout out to Andre Three Thousand. I love to have him on the show. I asked him once before. He said he'd do it. So you know, inshallah, yeah, we'd make that happen. So yeah. let's get into how to develop these great abilities and I'm not going to go too deep but I want you all to look at the fire right tonight we have fire fire is a very powerful element right fire is an element that purifies um, it said that and the human mind is not that good especially today's time at concentrating and holding thoughts in the book mathematical mind by Nuri he talks about the ability to be able to signal in how we have a radio in our head, right? And my father always told me this when we go to FOI classes where we would concentrate energy and we would figure out, you know, how to develop and be in tune, develop these gifts. But it's not knowledge that develops the gift, right? The gift is developed through moral cleanliness, right, as well. So not only that, you have to be physically, spiritually, mentally, right, clean, right? Um, and by clean, like you have to be in a higher pure state yeah. because we have so much toxins that exist on our body, on our mind and on our spirits. We're clouded from our higher gifts because we're all it requires so much energy to keep us right just at this state. So, you know, yogis. As most people see it as people who practice yoga, but it's more so anybody who practice divinity, right, or who on a journey of any higher consciousness will be considered like a yogi. But there's been stories of yogis reaching these higher states of divinity. And one thing we have in common, you know, in America, we talk about cracking your third eye, yeah. right, purifying and decalcifying it because of the calcification buildup on the third eye. And... I remember when I cracked mine, right? It's a true story. I had the ability to see in the dark. That was a gift that I had got. And now I think, I look at that gift kind of metaphorically now of like, you know, uh, being able to pierce the veil and be able to see things that others can't see. You know, why the rest of the world is looking and it may look like darkness to me, I see it clearly, mm -hmm. right? And that's always been one of my gifts. It's a very intuitive one. But anyway, back to the story, the. The, the yogis have believed that you can develop a gift by harnessing your ability to concentrate, right? Uh, specifically by keeping an image in the mind, right? So then you can practice this at home. How many people can keep one idea, one thought, one image, one picture in the mind, just say for a minute and a half? Just one. You try it. It may sound easy. Right, but just try to, I'm talking about no, just clearing your mind completely absent. Yeah, that's what I was about to get to. No, completely. Is this completely in your mind, or do you look at a picture and then try to focus on the picture that you just you looked can, at? You can look at something, but the goal is to, no, I don't want you to look at a picture. I want you to hold it in your no, mind. No, I'm saying, like, I can look at this picture yeah, on the look wall at that. and hold that image in my mind. Close hold my eyes that and in hold your it in mind. my mind. With no other thoughts, right? Most people probably going to go 10 seconds. Mm. But the longer you can go, the more power you have of the full domain of body, mind, body, and spirit. Because remember, you got two brains. You got your gut, 
Then you got your head. Yeah. So your gut has its own thoughts. Then you have your brain, your filter of logic and all the other different things. It has its own thoughts. Then you got your spirit, stuff be on your spirit. Then you got your body, stuff is on your physical body, right? So you have to be able to clean all of those and there's a process that you go through in order to receive and enhance this gift because we all have gifts but they come in and out, right? So in FOI class, we used to learn these different things as we would sit back and we would learn and study these gifts. And you can tune in to another person's thoughts. You can, I can take ideas out your head. I can make you think certain thoughts because the mind is not just a receiver. You know, when a person's flowing, they say, I'm receiving thoughts. Well, what about transmitting those thoughts? Yeah. So we have electrical force and activity within the mind. But the way that we exist today, they said that screen time for men, the more screen time you have, increases your chance for erectile dysfunction, mm -hmm. right? Like we don't realize how much these screens have an effect on us. How many people can say that they don't death scroll, right? You just caught yourself in a trap and you just, I've done it, right? So dissecting and disconnecting from that and having a clean mind um, is not just about, you know, um, not having any immoral thoughts, but at the same time, having full control over all your faculties. All of those compartments of where we are unhealed and we hold things, that possesses our body. So, you know, the Catholic Church may call it like a demon possession, but in reality, possession is anything that takes a hold of your thought that you can't mm -hmm. let go. Anything that controls you that you can't let go. So whether you look at it as a demon possession or like, let's say you're a sex addict, that's a possession. You know what I'm saying? Let's say you stressed out, that's a possession, right? So being able to repossess your own spirit and repossess your own mind and body, you develop such a clear concentrating power that is pure that most human beings on the planet would never experience. When you're a child, you have greater access to that because you're more pure. You're in a clean mind. You're in a clean body. Now, now when you say when you're a child, you got better access, Do are you referring to our childhood or the children of today because nowadays they are more addicted to their phone and death scrolling than we are yeah well it's dangerous for the children of the day because they have more distractions um they don't have to rely on their imagination mm. because they can type it in mid journey and see it right um and what this does is it makes them more dependent on exterior technology than interior technology Right, your interior technology is your brain. It is your your mind, right? Your imagination, your vision. What do they have to envision that they can't see? Right, so they have a world of instant images. Mm. So it's instant imagination at your fingertips. Uh, you don't have to imagine a world. You can literally go type it, type in, it in and it's there. Yeah. So that decreases that faculty, right? Then you could be scrolling and that kid runs into porn on the internet. Now they possessed, right, by that lower lust. You go before the internet, right, you're not getting access to that unless your uncle got some yeah, magazines unless or you something. Go, unless you go on a snoop around yeah. and turn his room, huh? So <laughs> these children today are possessed by way more, and I, be, I imagine that demoralization begins at a younger age today, unfortunately. That's probably what we face with the most. And they have, at first it was it's YouTube, it was Google, now it's AI. So children with the AI today is very interesting to understand. I was listening to a fellow futurist, Sanai Bao, talk about this on how the dangerous thing is that these children, they hop on ChatGPT and they make an instant friend, right? They're talking to the ChatGPT. Eventually, it's going to really just be talking back and having a whole conversation with you, right? But it's going to make some of these children narcissistic because it's going to be telling them, flattering them, telling them what they want to hear, yeah. completely based around them. Right, so you have to be careful on the type of personalities AI is going to create. The internet, social media created personality dysfunction disorder, but it de-gifts you. It takes away from your power, right? It demoralizes you. Mm -hmm. It decreases your morals and values. It can, you on the internet, you might find a corner on the internet you shouldn't be on. Now you're going down a rabbit hole, right? And certain spaces they call that red pilling. So you have to be careful about the exposure that your child has because you may not know what they're being possessed by, 
right? So it's going to be harder. And so in a book, Mathematical Mind by Nuri, he talks about how you have to be clean for about 20, 30 years in order to develop those gifts. He didn't say it's a skill. He yeah. said it's a gift. It's a gift that you receive. Yeah. So, so that's important. So now with, with everything that you just told, told the, um, the viewers or whatnot, I remember when Nori had said this last week. Uh -huh. And what I tell you, like, today's time, I say, so if it took 30 years for them, Nowadays, it might take y'all about 60 years to get clean, man. There's so many distractions and shit nowadays, you know? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I, I think, um, <clears throat> I think, hold on, I just think, they've been, they been shadow banning me. I think, it's, I don't think they shadow banning me. I think it's just what's been going on with the algorithm. Um, well, um, um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they told me with some allergies today on um, Instagram. We're going to have an allergies or whatnot. Hold on, I want I want to go in on this one a little more. Yeah. There's a lot of people who. It's funny because there's a lot of people who think like, um, you know, it's, there's there's a uh, popularization right now of Islam that's going on, right? Where there's a lot of people becoming Muslims. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, like a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I see Lil John just converted. Oh yeah, into yeah, him, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Islam. Lil John became a Muslim, which is definitely interesting. But <clears throat> let me ask you: Do you think you've ever had an ability before? Hmm. I feel like I always, yeah, my, my ability was, I feel like amongst my friends and, you know what I'm saying, people that's close to me, I always had the ability to uplift everybody around me. Like, even if I was going through something that, you know what I'm saying, that you couldn't see on the exterior, you know, I always came around with that energy to where everybody, you know, uh, uh, listen and gravitate to uh -huh. them, you know. So I, I meet a lot of people, and I was just having this talk with my cousin, like everybody who I meet and interact with, they end up loving me for life, for real. I get more love than hate, for sure, for sure. Yeah, I think my greatest, <clears throat> I've had a lot of abilities. Um, I could dream, walk. There's been times where I've been able to, uh, you know what I mean, tap in outside of my body. Like we really, that's a real ability and power. You know what I'm saying? There's a there's a real ability and power for one to be able to, you know, have level of clairvoyancy, right? Mm -hmm. um, and and this is something that you know I was taught this by gangsters. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you talk about pops and them man, and these are some stone cold killers, man, and they in the circle talking about real <laughs> things. No, we talk about real things on here. Pops will tell you he's a stone cold killer. We don't hide that, brother. All right, all right, you know what I'm saying? Right. Play one of his children, you find out. Right, I you know have. All right. I ain't, I listen, man. Ain't nobody said nothing about you. Your soft ass. No, <laughs> uh, but, but, no, it's real. Yeah. I remember when Samai used to tell me he seen ghosts, but I don't believe in ghosts mm. myself. I believe in energies. Right, yeah. I believe that there was a, a study that showed that you ever seen a, a curly in photography? So curly in photography is like, you know, where you can see like the guess, energy yeah, field. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that before. So they showed it where they took the picture of the curly in photography before you could see the electricity coming out like a leaf. Then you cut the leaf and then the structure of the leaf is still there in the, elect in the electricity. So there's like a phantom limb. Yeah. So. It's kind of saying that like if you stay in one place for very long, you gotta imagine like there's like an the, in the electrical um, shadow of you left behind. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? In that same place, like you can tell there was energy here. You walk in a room and you can tell when somebody been yelling or fighting and going crazy. There's energy left behind. We leave energy signatures all throughout different places that we come to. So when people believe in like haunted houses, I don't truly believe in a haunted house, but I believe like that energy, oh, yeah. right? That's, whether that's, there was a lot of fear, whether there was a lot facts. of hate, and fighting. Only because energy of the architect, you know, get trapped in the corners. Yeah. You know, we got got these square structures now. It ain't built like back in ancient times. So nah. a lot of energy get trapped in the house, even to, to, in today's time. Yeah, <laughs> there's there's a lot of people who, 
like I was watching this uh, movie and this lady was jokingly like, yo, you want me to come smudge your house? Like, you know, the Native Americans were the ones who used a lot of the smudging techniques with the sage. Yeah. But it's real. You know what I'm saying? You got to clear the energy in your environment. Otherwise, you're going to get sick. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you was fighting, why would you want that energy to stay there? Yeah. If you was angry, why would you want it to stay there? Because... From a scientific level, you charge the particles in the atmosphere. So it's left there kinda, and then your kinda, particles bond with I kind of touched that. on this on the last episode when I was te- when we was talking about people who keeping their um, deceased loved ones memorabilia all around the house. Yeah. And then you come in the house, you get the feeling all sad because you're constantly thinking of that. And mm-hmm. you get to see it every everywhere you turn in the room. Yeah. Yeah, so that's another form of it. <laughs> now, I mean, so, <clears throat> you know, you, you, you definitely want to clear... Like, I'm a logical person, so when I take things, when people say spirits and people say all these things, it's, it's interesting because it's all the same word. I don't know why we don't like using the same words, but human beings have been broken up in all these sects of languages. So mm-hmm. whether it's spirit, whether it's ki, whether it's energy, like the root word for chi at first was weather. You know what I mean? It was talking about the energy and the atmosphere, the weather conditions, and they explained that when at first, when you was talking about chi, you was talking about, let's say, if it's like a rainy day, you know what I mean, or if it's like a thunderstorm, it, it may have been caused because of bad energy in the atmosphere, that environment that probably essentially needed to be cleansed. So as the winds go through, they looked at that as like chi, and then that turns into like energy as we know it today because we live in a Western world where we're only focused on left brain logical thinking. So spiritual, creative, right? thinking is lost today because everybody is stuck in this logic mind it's either logical or emotional right and that's why we have the world the way we is today mm. but when you go to our what's it called are you verdict are you i never nailed it said it correctly you got to get back to we have to get back to the indigenous practices and how the original people on the planet earth operated right i was looking at a study today and it was talking about how gossip content and low-level content and why it has effects on the brain is because number one you feel like you're a part of something it sends a serotonin reward response listening to these things right but what is it doing is demoralizing society Mm. it's hacking the brain to make you feel right a certain way getting information you're not supposed to have right everybody's caught up in this gossip train Mm -hmm. but it's destroying society but they say they, they love the devil gossip and hate God's gospel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> now I said that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I said, wait a minute, boy, that sounds Man, good. <laughs> <laughs> they love the devil's gospel and they hate God's gospel. You know what I'm saying? No, I think t- today people love the devil. I just really think that. I think today people love the devil more than they love God. And of course, that's not all God's people, but a lot of God's, so-called God's mm. people, they love the devil. And they don't even know it. But if you would think about, you know, the way that you live, that's the devil rewarding you. That ain't God rewarding you. You know what I mean? If, if, if you have a business that's evil, you know what I mean? That's the devil giving you those rewards, not God. And then people get the nerve to thank God. God ain't had nothing to do with that. Facts. That was the devil gifting you for doing his bidding. You know what I mean? To take you away from that. So there's a lot of people today, even with their platforms and media, as we talk about the two-year anniversary of High Level, man, ain't no excuse because we proved that we proved that, you know, you can do things in a meaningful, valuable way. They chose to be time. zesty gossip bots. Yeah. They chose to be botty boys. You know what I'm talking about? They, 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 that's, and that's and not real. only did the show, went on tour with it, brought it to the people, like, you know, they, they got, got close to the people who were already tuned in, you know? Yeah. Like, we real life did that, you know, for sure. So, if, if, if uh, uh, to <clears throat> me, it's like, I was always taught you love the devil because the devil gives you nothing. You know what I'm saying? That's what it is. Mm. And the devil itself, the devil will reward you for killing yourself. And what I mean by that, how many people have went and got success and then got depressed? He rewarded you that whole time while you were destroying yourself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Imagine that. Just think about that for a second. The greatest gift and greatest ability is like, you know, for a man to be on the right path. But if, if you go gain the world while destroying yourself and you get all this stuff and you feel like you're nothing afterwards, who tricked you? Yeah. <laughs> he set you on this whole path, then gave you everything you wanted and the whole time you was going against self. So 
it's a very powerful thing to be on the right path because people spend millions trying to get back on the right path. So what was it really worth? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Facts. If you got to give everything back just to get your soul back, <laughs> that means your soul was worth more than everything you gained. Mm. So what was the experience that you got? So it's my gift that my parents gave me was... Um, my gift that my parents gave me was affirmation, and they initiated me into saying, hey, you are a God. And that was the single greatest factor in me becoming who I am today. And I feel sorry if you don't have or you a parent and you don't teach your child the truth, and you don't tell them about their abilities, you don't tell them who they are, and you have them stuck, and you have them fearful, and you have them afraid of the world and their own powers, because they will shut off their abilities because they don't ever want to prove you right. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it, it, there's too many people that shut off their abilities. So with, with what you just said, right, like you, you thank your parents for, you know what I'm saying, giving you that insight on who you are as a human, you know, or telling you that you're a god or whatnot. Mm -hmm. I seen Nick Cannon had a podcast episode with um, Devon Franklin. Now he's the ex-husband of Megan Good. Mm. And he made the statement where where he said trying to fix your partner in a relationship and marriages is a recipe for failure. So I wanted to ask you, with what you just um, told us, what if your partner hasn't been indoctrinated with those same ideologies as, as you have? As in, do you try to it ain't impose them on her? Or, you, or do you try to, bring, you know what I'm saying, try to give her the insight? There's no compulsion right um in my belief right which is islam there's no compulsion yeah so you can't compulse someone to do something it's not compulsory but you will not win with a partner that has a different belief system than you many people have tried and it worked out enough for them to have a kid and go split right but y'all gotta believe in the same thing you have to believe in the same god right and you cannot force, and then there has to be patience, and there has to be a willingness and a want. They have to find, they have to find your beliefs beautiful. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And y'all can spiritually grow together. You, know, you feel me? Like, ain't like nothing already, more beautiful than that. You already got to be on a spiritual path yourself, right? So you can't just, you can't force your spiritual path on nobody else, basically, what you're saying, right? No, nah, you definitely can't. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I, I, I don't think... You can't make anybody do anything that they don't want to do. Mm. So even in when you're trying, you're going against the grain. And then you got to check your own psychology. Why would you want to be with somebody that's going against you in the first place? So for me, that whole love thing is like you can get caught up in that love, but I'd rather a woman that respect me. You know what I'm saying? If she respect me, she's going to do the correct thing. You mm. feel me? But there's a lot of cats that just get stuck by their heart and they forget their head. Mm, they get stuck by their heart and forget their head. Expound yeah. on that real quick. I mean, I'm a thinking man. A man is his mind. A man is his thoughts. A man is his ability to give birth to his thoughts. That's where he seeks all his pleasure, right, and his stimulation. A man ain't supposed to find his stimulation and pleasure through his woman. He's supposed to find it through his mind and his abilities of his gifts that he is able to bring out in his world, his talents, his ability to be able to conjure things, you feel me, build things, to work things into existence. If he is always seeking pleasure, right, and I've been there seeking pleasure in the bosom of a woman, you feel me? Mm -hmm. Then that's only because you are not confident in your abilities as a man. And when a man is confident in his abilities, a woman will love him and she will respect him. She will seek him, find him. He becomes a magnet because he's going to heat up. And that energy, when he's heating up, what is heat cause electricity, magnetism, every woman attracted to that. When you're in motion, you're on the move. She's going to love you. So it's no reason to even do things to try to seek the pleasure of a woman, you know what I'm saying, or chase a woman, because when you operate within your full faculty, she go find and chase you. It's irresistible. <laughs> a, a, a man that's moving how you supposed to yeah. move, man, irresistible to all women down there. You feel me? So, no, nah, you, you, you got to know yeah, your like mind. Your, your, conf your confidence become greater than everybody's man, doubt. you got to know your mind. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can... I, you can love somebody, don't mean that you didn't even supposed to be with them. The movies mm. tell you all that crap. The movies tell you, follow your heart, be, be with that person if you feel something. They tell you you're going to make all these dumb mistakes. That's stupid. 
I'm going to tell you right now as a man, I don't care if you love us, you don't respect you, and it ain't the right timing. You need to focus on something else. Ditch your leave and get yourself together. You know what I mean? It's always going to be another. You feel me? And if she was right, then she'll wait. If not, then, hey, it is what it is because you don't want a woman with no patience anyway. Go get yourself together, then come get back together. Mm. Follow your mind because it ain't nothing wrong with following your heart, but you got to filter it too. You know what I'm saying? A man has to think logically. You feel me? Operate. That's like a woman going to get with a broke man that can't take care of her because she loved and then later they got to split because there's money issues. Why? Like, what are we talking about? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, it happens every single day. We got a full society. Everybody is making heart love decisions about who they supposed to be with. But the logical decisions, oh, they last much longer. You can go get you an arranged marriage that's going to last longer than... Yeah, an unarranged marriage, because if you got an arranged marriage, then y'all must have thought about this logically. It has to be a, nothing but a logical decision on why we getting together. Our families, mm -hmm. this is going to be right decision on paper. You can take care of me, blah, so, blah, blah. Zay. Hold on, wait a minute. So, so you a fan of arranged marriages versus love marriages? I ain't a fan of, of, of one or the other as far as over one or but, the other. But, but the arranged will make more sense to but you. But think about it. If you got an arranged marriage, right? And you can come up with your own details of what goes into the arrangement of picking a partner. Because eventually people go have AI picking their partner, right? But that's, <laughs> that's an arranged marriage, right? If Tinder yeah. has an algorithm and you swipe, that's an arranged, right, setting for a relationship, yeah. right? If a friend introduces you to somebody, that's an arranged relationship. We have all sort of arrangements that's happened. People got derangements as well. There's a lot of deranged relationships. I'd rather an arranged than a deranged one. <laughs> you feel me? So, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> so, when we say unarranged, unarranged is it's saying that nobody arranged. It just, just happened, right, by happenstance. Mm. So, what we're saying is imagine if your parents agree. Because after we meet somebody, then we try to get everybody else to agree with our arrangements. And if they don't, it usually causes a problem. So, if your family don't like them, parents don't like them, friends don't like them, it's not a good decision for y'all families to be joined in union. Mm. Now you start with conflict. So, imagine if your parents using their wisdom and their insight, your grandparents agree, your friends agree, and this is also good for both of y'all futures based on who you said y'all was. And they can figure out a level of compatibility to go in there. Yeah, especially when you young and you a virgin and you starting off, man, you just want a female. You know what I'm saying? You don't know nothing about this. You feel me? You don't know what you're missing out on. And they come in there and they bring you one and you like, hey, let's get married. Let's do this. Man. You feel me? And figure it out later. And a lot of those marriages have worked out. But here's the thing, like the statistics on arranged and unarranged you know, in arranged countries, there's, it's frowned upon divorce highly. So you're going to get a skewed statistic, yes. But the statistics on arranged marriages, we know is a 50% failure in the black community is 70% failure. You feel me? So at the end of the day, the, the, arranged, the unarranged is not working and the deranged ones is not working. So I want to shift the, con um, the conversation over. Hey, y'all come find us on YouTube right now. We're about to finish the conversation. Yeah. <laughs> I want to get back into the abilities. This was a good conversation as well. Yeah. The abilities into what? 19 Keys on YouTube. Tap in right now. Oh, you want to talk about it to the, beat, the, beat, the first topic? Yeah. No, no, I was just saying that for, uh, I was just saying that for marketing. I used casting. <laughs> uh, uh, so look, this is what I want to ask you, right? So I seen, I seen the thing where, let me make sure I'm in, I think the um, city of Chicago. Mm. They want to sue the company that make the Glock, which is a um, firearm for inventing the switches because it's increasing their uh -huh. crime rate out there in um, Chicago or whatnot. Now, you know, my thing with that is I felt, me personally, I felt like the people who using the switches should be the ones that have to take accountability mm. for that. But you had also gave me another um, viewpoint on it, man. Can you explain to the people what you said? Well, yeah, I think that the, the reason that um, they going at them is obvious because, as you talked about and you pointed out, that they made those switches for the military. Yeah. But here's the reality. Come on now. They make it for the military, but, of course, they want it to retail because beyond those military contracts, there's more money 
by being able to flood the streets with it. Yeah. So what they do is they make a Glock and then of course they make it to where it can be um, converted, over converted to a right auto. into an auto utilizing the switch. That means that at the beginning of the process, they're making this so that it can have a customized convertible you know, uh, part to it. So instead they need to make one that's for the street that don't have that ability to convert if they don't want to get sued. But if you got all these people that are dying, because listen, first of all, these cats don't know how to shoot anyway. So when they put the switch on, they hitting all kind of oh, different man. people. That's why I was just flying and crazy. And I was telling my cousin, I said, man, you got to be stupid or brave as hell to be in the streets nowadays. Because these little cats got switches on their gun. Ain't no way I'm beefing with a guy that got a switch on his gun. Little dude, skinny as all get out. <laughs> Ain't no way. You know what I'm saying? He eat every other day. And, and he ain't going to fight and, nobody. And on top of that, but when he pull out that switch, <laughs> oh, man, I'm cool. he might just trip off and be, he, yeah. yeah, no, he, I'm, I'm cool. Yeah, but you had said you got that, it. you said that they should stop making the Glock and, and create an alternate gun that don't take the switch. Yeah, a street version. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? One that can't be, the one that doesn't have the upgrade, one that can't be converted. I think that that's, that's easy fix for them. Mm. You know what I mean? If they don't want the streets to be flooded with it, you feel me? If you want the streets to be flooded with it, then continue to make it the same way, and this is why they got a suit against them. Right. Right? These corporations know exactly what they do. They got in the marketing plan. They trying to always figure out how to make more profit for the shareholders and the owners of the company and the board and all of that stuff. So they're not thinking about any moral responsibility. You know what I'm saying? They're thinking about their fiscal responsibility. Right. And the one thing about these companies is, yes, they do have a fiscal responsibility to the shareholders to do whatever is going to make more money, not for the safety of the public. Yeah. So, and on, along the same lines of whatnot, I had also seen that the rapper Meek Mill, he had tweeted out today. Let me, uh, let me find the um, correct tweet because I don't want to give y'all no misinformation. <laughs> uh, all right, here it go right here. It say... Rapper Meek Mill, he said he want to um, do a public contract with the city of Philadelphia where he take 10% of his music earnings and give it directly to the city of Philadelphia to combat gun violence in this city. Now, I don't know if you all know this week, uh, Meek Mill lost one of his friends, you mm. know, when they had the footage going all around on the internet, his friend getting killed in front of his house, you know, his car pulled up and they got it all on the doorbell camera. But this is my thing with Meek Mill. I see that he want to do this, right? It, it's a good thing. I feel like that's, you know, for the feel that way or whatnot. But if you're giving the, fill it to the, um, the city of Philadelphia 10% to combat the gun violence, would you also need to quit rapping about the gun violence? That's a good point. That's a good point. You can't combat it and have a soundtrack to it at the yeah. same time. Um, Mick seems to be somebody who goes through different he goes through his different changes throughout the day and his thoughts. And yeah. we get to experience that, you know what I mean, as the world because he shares a lot of them. The thoughts that come in his mind, he doesn't seem to have a lot of filter when it comes to what he wants to share as his human experience, right? There's a duality in all of us in a sense to where, you know, um, you can feel something one day, right? And then you can do something completely different the next day. Yeah. And he's spoken about the fact that the very record labels that he worked for want him to make that kind of music. And he yeah. said that's why he makes it. He he doesn't, just like every other rapper, doesn't get to dissociate the entertainment from reality. And specifically somebody like him and other street guys who are actually in the streets. It's not just entertainment when you're actually in the streets. Mm. Right. If you consider yourself to be real and you make music that's in connection to that lifestyle, then it has a real effect on people that are actually in that environment, right? If you're somebody that's fake, right, and you make music and you don't live nothing near that lifestyle, then it can be taken as entertainment, right? And so it's the same thing if you rapping and you happen to diss somebody that's a real person, right, and you beefing with a real person, that's street politics on wax. 
You feel me? That's not just entertainment. It's mm. the same thing with drill rappers when they talking about they smoke with somebody in the pack. That's not entertainment at all. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They actually talking about that's people beef. who died. Yeah. That's real beef. So that's that's what I want to get to, right? So like I just said, he just lost one of his friends on, on film. Ooh, that go out of strong. <laughs> he just lost one of his friends. Um, not, not laughing at this situation. I'm laughing at what you said. But he just lost one of his friends. So how do he tell... The rest of the members, right? Mm -hmm. Not to retaliate, you know, and that he pushing peace. After this already done happened to you, after you just lost a loved one. And this is a dilemma that all hoods across America face. I mean, it's something that he got to deal with. It's something that all generals got to deal with. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, I think we got a term. It's called straddling the fence. Straddling the fence is when you don't pick one side. The most dangerous thing you can do is straddle the fence. It's when you, you, you got one foot in one world, right? And you're trying to hop into another. And it's this time when your sense is actually dull and it's dangerous, right? And it's confusing. And your mind is not as sharp and your mind is not as clear. And everybody has to make that decision at some point in their life to not straddle the fence and not be in these two worlds and go completely 100 percent into one world right gangsters upgrade they elevate they right. transition and and their new role a lot of times they think they might not have that same level of respect and authority right but that's why i'm i'm, I'm constantly giving appreciation for the representation that dirk has right now because he mm. gonna tell you i don't like the streets he going to tell you I'm taking my Shahada. He going to tell you I'm, I'm doing my fast in Ramadan. And that's not to say that, you know, the rest of his record is going to be perfect and nothing happened, no beats pop up. But I can see the active participation and saying change. I can see the music, you know what I'm saying, following that. And he trying to figure out that way to do it at the same time. And that's a clear pathway to getting that done while keeping the authority, keeping your realness, but saying, listen, I'm elevating. You feel me? Tupac said it best. He say, I got thug like tatted on my chest. This forever. But he say, at the end of the day, it's like high school. You get to keep your diploma, Fact. but you graduate to a new degree. Just because you get a new degree don't mean a diploma gone. So I don't mean you no longer, your past is no longer what it was. But everybody got to graduate. Man, I, I had, I could share a story with you all. I experienced that once I came home, bro. Like, prior to me going to jail, I used to be real active like i always tell y'all or whatnot and mm. i was the guy in the family everybody called if some shit going on you know that you used to call me i used to walk you home you know that so Stop. anyway you know but anyway you talking about listen, elementary wait a minute nah be for real so we come home when i get out or whatnot <laughs> when i was in there i was facing the life sentence you know i didn't hear from a lot of those same people i used to so-called protect and mm. look out the mm. make sure they still alive you know i got a lot of cousins that's alive because of me still to this day you know but when I came home, me as I sat down and did that time, I was facing life, bro. And I realized, like, I probably will never see some of my family members or friends again. Mm -hmm. Like, never, you know? Yeah. So when I finally caught my, um, you know, I was broken down, but I caught my breakthrough. When I came home, I, re I figured out that I'm changing my life around and I'm going to stay on this path that I'm on now. So I ended up losing... Um, a family member or whatnot, and I was getting all the calls in the world, like, man, you need to come back to St. Louis, find out who did this. And I had to tell them, like, man, look, when I was just locked up, I ain't get a letter from y'all, a, a mm. card to tell me happy birthday. You think I'm finna risk what I got going on now to come back and get into some bullshit, ride, ride around looking for the option? No, I ain't on that no more. I changed my frequency. You know, a lot of people was mad at me about that, but shit, I'm the one that got to deal with it, you know, at the end of the day. you know. I think that's the most gangster thing. Because what you're really, you doing is you really bowing down the pressure. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And you're afraid that these people go view you a certain way. Like, that's an insecurity. That's a yeah. fear. Uh, see, being like... I literally got that car, bro, <laughs> you know. No, like, think about that. Because if you would have did it because of the pressure of how somebody else to look at you, that's more cowardly. You feel me? Yeah. Then you having, a, uh, as a grown man, having your mind made up on what direction you want to go in life. And you become pressured to go the opposite direction because of other people feel and think. Yeah. Right? So it's, it's, it's understanding, like, wait a minute. If I'm fearless enough to have got myself in trouble, I'm fearless enough to get myself out of. Like, that same spirit that it takes, that same warrior spirit that it takes 
you know, to be in the street is the same spirit that's going to take to lead the street. Yeah. And it's the same spirit that take to lead the streets at the same time. Yeah. You feel me? So I think that, you know, a lot of people got to see it that way in order for them to be able to be like, you know what, you're right. You feel me? Like, who, who, who am I to care about the peer pressure of what everybody else got to think? Yeah. And th that street that you live on, that hood you live on, that ain't everything anyway. It's a whole world out there, you feel me, that's going to see and want better for you in <laughs> a better community man, of tribe to, members When I went you. to London, that shit showed me, like, bro, Come people on, in man. America dying over the block. They, 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 it's a whole other way of life out here, man, for real. Man, it don't make no sense, man. I ain't <laughs> seen crazy. a lot of beauty in this world, man. And, yeah. and I often think about if I would have died in the streets, getting shot at multiple times, doing dumb stuff, mobbing, I'd have never seen this side of life, Man. ever. You feel me? But in my ignorant state, I didn't even know it existed. So if you don't give yourself a vision of something better, you don't even have a, a, the, the ability to produce the will to go do something mm. greater. Now, when you say you would have never knew, like, you know what I'm saying, what this world was if you didn't get the exposure to it or whatnot, right? So let's say all of these top rappers, right, take all of the, the guys out of their hood to take them on tour with them, take them on the road with them so they can get that exposure. Do you think they can shift the culture or would it become a problem where you can't even trust people to have them around, all, you know what I'm saying, this type of lifestyle? Everybody can't go. Mm. Everybody can't go. At this, at this, at this big age of where we at as a people, you have to uh, you you take who you can, who you can trust. Yeah. But it ain't your job to risk your own freedom. It ain't your job to risk your life trying to change somebody else's life. Mm. Right? Because oftentimes we get a hero complex too, where and a savior complex, and that's a psychological thing to where. You know, we feel guilty for becoming successful while others haven't. Yeah. And that comes from being in places of trauma, right? Being in environments of trauma, having that survivor's guilt. And so a lot of people end up losing because of that psychological guilt that brings them right back and right back down. Instead of saying, I broke free, I'm going to continue to be free, but I'm going to figure out different ways to either inspire or see change. Right. But it's not your direct ability to go in unless it's your family, unless it's somebody that you want to take responsibility for. But you're not supposed to have that guilt from surviving. And then they not supposed to pull you back down because we if we being honest, you know, if 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 you you wouldn't be pulled down helping other people if they pulled themselves up to yeah. meet the opportunity that you're trying to give them. And I think it was. um. Who said that? He said, man, a lot of people would be millionaires if they were smart. And he was talking about his homeboys because he was rapping on Rap Radar. And he was explaining, like, I done brung so many people out the hood. I done brung them around everything. If they were just smart, they'd have got money themselves. But it's like you having the responsibility to actually keep yourself out, yeah. build the things up. Then you got to go and train everybody morally. We're not talking about skillfully. You got to train them morally, yeah. the proper handling of people, yeah. like how to treat people, how to move in certain environments, right? You got to culture them, elevate them. That's and then, a and whole entire job that, itself. Them whole things that they should be doing on their own because, yeah. shit, you can't focus on, if you the head of it. Well, you got to at least want you know, it for your own, yeah, for yourself. That's facts. And therefore, when somebody educating you, you know what I'm saying, you're going to take it. But if you resist it, like, oh, you doing this, you changing this, yes, I'm elevating because I was given a low state and you holding on to that low state and that low state ain't what connects us. You bonded to, 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 to lower me. You ain't connected to higher me. Mm. And there's mm. so many people that feel guilty for <clears throat> elevating. Are you thinking you better than me? I know I'm more elevated and that's fine with that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just Elevate to yourself. I was finna get to that because some people get to saying, ah, oh, you don't learn Hollywood. So you want you want me to stay hood? <laughs> You want me to stay? Oh, you want man. me to stay all the things that's detrimental see, that's to why, my growth, my elevation. That's why we say gods. You know what I'm <laughs> yeah. saying? Because ain't nobody gonna be mad at you. Are oh, you a god now? Yes, I am. You know what I'm talking about? Are yeah. oh, you? Are oh, you, you? You? You elevated your path and your purpose and your potential, and you don't move simple anymore. You're not stuck in survival mode no more. You telling me you enlightened now? Yes, mm. I am. You telling me you operate in light and not darkness. You telling me you heal and not stuck in your trauma. Fact. You telling me you know how to think complex. You know how to analyze. You know how to strategize. You know how to execute. That's how you operating right now? Yes, I am. Right? Because yeah. they don't have the vocabulary to say that, but that's what they saying. Yeah. You feel me? So 
yes, I am. And that has to be more of a proud thing <laughs> when we elevate and people try to check us on it and say, yes, I am. No, I'm not mm. like you no more. I used to eat like you. I used to think like you. I used to walk like you. Mm. I was ignorant. I was stupid. I was stuck in this lower dimension because everything that come from the hood, nigga, that was Frankenstein. That don't come from black God energy. That don't come from us being great. That come from us having nothing and us treating each other like nothing. And then you got the other group of set, the other set of people that say, I'm just waiting on you. So, and you know, those are the people that saying, like, basically, they waiting for you to finish all the accomplishments and come back and get them out the hood. But my thing is, nah, once, I reach, once I reach a certain point in my life, right, how can I come and get you if you're not going to add value to what we got going on right now? The point is, <laughs> is if, if, if I reach that higher point and yeah. you stand and in you the same place. you still waiting on me. I can't. I, I can't. My elevation is yeah. the fact that I start hanging around people like you. Yeah. And not just you. But people that are at a lower level. Mm. And if I need to elevate, I can't even have you around now. So if you're not elevating while I'm elevating, I gotta keep distance from you because mm. you're gonna pull me down. So if you waiting on me to elevate, all the things that I had to do was most of them was realizing getting away from people like you and connecting with people in different circles so that I can have a different operation. So now I gotta ask, what's your skill set? What value can you bring to me? So you telling me the only thing I can do is constantly give you value. No, at that point in time, your goal is to figure out what value you can bring to me, not the other way around. Facts. Ain't nobody got to feel guilty because a grown man <laughs> don't know how to build and develop and train himself into some opportunities. You know what I'm saying? The weak go get left behind. That just is what it is. The problem is when you got children that grow up because there's weak men and then you got a weak environment and it creates a cycle. So people that think about the hood is not just thinking about grown men that got the issues, even though they were children that grew up and weren't able to get out of it. But you really thinking about this cycle that's going to continue to happen. So there's always going to be brothers that's going to go back. There's, there's New Era Detroit. There's the Nation of Islam. They always out there teaching. But when you got one teaching and you got one reaching, you got to reach back. You got somebody teaching, you got to learn. You got to show some initiative. You feel mm. me? Because if you don't show no initiative, you ain't got no potential. Yeah, so I remember when you asked me earlier about a, um, a superpower or whatnot. And I remember I was telling you, like, shit, it's me motivating. So that's what I do. You I remember, tap back into you. the people from the past and get them some motivation. I might tell them about some new AI that I learned about. And like, look, you can do this same shit right now from your phone or whatnot. You know, other than that, man, I, I don't know what to tell you. You know, because shit, I'm on the path myself trying to get to where I'm going. And I ain't got the Listen, time to be trying to bring everybody with This This is where my empathy Real comes talk. in. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot of black men and men, period. It, it, they're going through a terrible time today. The weakness has gripped them, mm. choked them up. Social media, social pressures, brain issues, body issues, social economic issues, things that are bigger than them have beaten them down. And so they got to come back because the cream always rises to the top and it's your time. And if you're not willing to dis make that decision, to make any shift to change, you ain't a soldier that nobody need. You feel me? Like, I recognize the empathetic aspect of there's a lot of stress and anxiety and all of that stuff that people are going through. And sometimes you got to shelf that until you can put yourself into a position to deal with that. I get that. You feel me? And then sometimes you got to attack it head on. And a lot of people don't want to do that because dealing with yourself is the hardest fight you gonna have to deal with. So you rather fight somebody else, whether it's fighting your girl or fighting your homeboys and knocking somebody down in the street. But you ain't so gangster when it comes to dealing with yourself. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But that's necessary. So we overindulge in the drugs. We overindulge in the stimulants. And what that do, it exacerbates our condition. You know what I mean? You're getting high as hell because you don't want to deal with reality, so you're trying to numb the pain of, of, of not processing, of living up to your own potential. Now you got to live in a reality of comparison, right? But here's the reality. The, I, it's, it's, you have to go find a function where you get your mind clear, right? Mm. It's not going to be easy. Easy ain't part of the equation, right? But we do live in a time where there is opportunity and you can be creative, but it's gonna require you to clean yourself up. It's gonna require you to possibly submit to another man, right? And a lot of people don't wanna do that. 
I grew up having to submit to other men because they could teach and train me so that I can get better, yeah. right? And then when I can submit to them, I can submit to myself. But who wants a bunch of men around that can't submit to nobody but then want something with their hand out? That don't make no sense. So it's not even so much you submitting to the man, you submit to the mission. And you saying that, damn, if I come on your mission and I'll be a general, if I be a soldier to the general, then guess what? I get the reward as well. Because here's the thing. When we talking about submission, it's a two-way streak always because there's a benefit and a reward factor from each person working in harmony with each other. Right? But the problem is, is that we only know how to submit when it's something negative or something illegal. Thanks. We don't know how to submit to something Thanks. positive and constructive. Right? So therefore, we don't know how to get over our ego, the narcissism, the issues, the limiting beliefs. Right? I've been an outlier my whole life because I don't have no limiting belief. I have limitless beliefs. All my trauma, I transcended. You know what I'm saying? Everything mm -hmm. I'm able to alchemize, and it's still, I still got things in me that I'm flowing because I grew up in a very traumatic environment. I, I got brothers in jail and prison right now that I wish was on this journey with me today, but they're not. You know what I'm saying? So I got empathy for people. I got empathy for the world, but I ain't got no sympathy. I ain't going to feel sorry for you because you already feel sorry for yourself. My thing is to tell you you're capable of it if you want it. Thanks. And if you want it, I got the game for you. If you want it, there's other brothers that got the game for you. If you want it, Nation Islam will take a brother in instantly, anytime you want it. But y'all know you ain't going to get it in the church. So when we talking about getting you the game, we talking about getting you the knowledge, whether we talking about technology or spirituality or consciousness or militant training or a whole new order, man, you better take and get with the program. Otherwise, you're going to be lost out here and slaughtered like a sheep. Mm. And I'm going to be honest with y'all, right? I had a list of topics to get into tonight, right? But I feel like I want to let this conversation marinate tonight because it's, it's a lot of Jews that was dropped in this tonight, you feel me? And the reason we got this fire right here is because you got to shed those layers. All of the negative things that you got that's a part of you, I need you to take them and just throw them in the fire. Get rid of that shit. You did what I'm saying? Because it ain't doing nothing but stunning your growth, making you more depressed, slowing you down even more, making you unfocused for the family. It, it, you can't guide nobody because right. you're going to lead them to more destruction and the cycle going to continue. So I just want you to take it all, throw it in the fire, man, fast. Yeah. <laughs> just fast. There's two types of people in this world. It's people that's helpful and people that's hurtful. You know what I mean? If you got anybody in your circle that's hurtful, it lets you know you need to let them go. People that's helpful, you need to hold them close. Mm. If you want a simple breakdown to, to start organizing your life in a more harmonious way, think about that. There's two days that you have in your life. It's the days that you're hurtful to yourself and the days you're helpful to yourself. Right? When you're hurtful, it's the days you're working for the devil. That devil is self. When you're helpful, you're working for God. That God is self. You know what I'm saying? How you gonna line that up? How many days are helpful? How many days are hurtful in your life? Right? Sometimes we don't even know when we're doing something hurtful. Right, because what we feeding, you know what I'm saying, ain't gonna help us in the long run. And that's why we talk about future self. It's like you gotta care about your future because you end up having to live his life. You gotta mm. care about your future because you end up having to live her life. Right, so the things that we don't take care of today, we gotta deal with tomorrow. Yeah. So if you want access to a better life, well, you gotta clean your environment. Start with cleaning up your body, right? And here's the thing about food, because I know everybody get into, yo, know, you gotta eat perfect. It ain't even about the perfection in your eating. It's about the intentions in your spirit because you can transform food with the right powerful energy. I've seen people who don't even eat that well and they got more energy than the greatest vegan on the planet Earth. Why? Because their mind has been conditioned and they pull energy out the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. They excited about life. They get up and they just go. So it don't matter what they eat and it ain't pulling them down because they transmuting all of that energy. They ain't putting all of that intention yeah, in intention, it. Yeah. So imagine if you if you got that type of energy to where you passionate about life and you putting that intention in it and you eating right. So now you ain't got to put energy in to transmute nothing because it's already good for you. Right. And you mentally clean. You're not fighting yourself. You're not trying to Go against yourself and reclean yourself because you got demons on your spirit, right? So now you ain't got to have all that energy going towards that, right? And your environment is powerful, right? Because environment is powerful to nature. So if you're in a negative environment, but you have a good nature, that environment mm. will pull you away from it because we're organisms, 
right, uh, uh, that are influenced on a microscopic level beyond what we even understand or comprehend. So <coughs> it's the bless you. It's the cleaning of the environment, the cleaning of the mind, the cleaning of the spirit, the cleaning of the body, and that begins to transform you. I promise you, there's no man or woman that will go through this rhythm and not be transformed. Mm. You can't not see the light after that. You can't not become light after that. Mm. You can't tell me that if you don't change the diet of your thinking, it don't change the reality that you're expressing. Mm. It's just reality. Facts. You know what I'm saying? When, you, when Nori, you get in what you put out. What Nori said last week, when you, right? You, 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 you put in what you get out. They gonna see this on the episode when it come out, but come he on. say, opportunity only knocks once. But temptation is always leaning on the door. Man, bitch. stay at the door. <laughs> stay stay at leaning the door. on the door, bitch. You did. Yeah, and that's because they know you're going to answer. So the more you stop answering, what you, you weaken the temptation. Temptation so weak, it ain't even got no energy. It's been knocking so long and you mm. ain't answered at all. Now it's getting weak. Now that thump ain't happening. Now they go leave. They like a Jehovah Witness. Oh, man, you don't want this. He ain't going to answer the door. If answer. he do answer, he going to slam uh -huh. it back in the face. Yeah. He going to throw it in the face. Answer the door. <laughs> Who is it? Ah, <laughs> don't even worry about it. I got this. Oh, I'm God about it. You don't need. I appreciate y'all. Yes. Take the pamphlet. Here you go. Yeah, y'all have a blessed one. All right, now. Yeah. All right. No, yeah. Shout out to Hova, though. Shout out to Hova. Yeah. But no, for real, though. We want to thank everybody for tuning in tonight. But I want to ask y'all something personally. Can y'all oh, please? Oh, I said I was going to answer some questions. Hold on. I got to hit a couple a questions. But I want y'all to like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the like, share, and subscribe. And pass this message on to the ones you think need to hear. So there was questions <laughs> that were in the high-level order. We got 20,000 members, first of all. Congrats to everybody that's a part of it. Congratulations. Ours is popping, you know what I'm saying? I be seeing people that be starting, be like three people in there, so I appreciate y'all. Um, all right, let's see. Somebody say, how do you trust? This is Dilworth Melanie. How do you trust the unknown? That's a, uh, that is how you develop faith, is belief in the unknown, mm. right? So the way I look at trust, it's just interesting. You don't have to trust anyone. It's a misconception that you have to trust people. You have to believe people. And belief and trust is different. So my thing is about how much do I trust myself that I know you. Mm. So the old analogy goes to a snake. There's many different types of snakes. Some snakes are rattlesnakes. Some snakes are poisonous. Some will kill you in an instant. Some are hard, harmless gardener snakes, right? Barely go deal with you, barely go bother you, no matter how many times they bite you. So my goal is to be knowledgeable on each one of these snakes, mm. right? And, and you get your knowledge from their actions. <laughs> yeah, you study them, you learn them, you get educated on them. Mm. Then, therefore, I have no reason to not trust the snake. I just need to know the snake is what it is. So I can operate and move based on what this snake is. So I know I need to be more careful with this snake. This snake can bite and kill me. It's a black mamba right here, right? This one is a gardener. I ain't even worrying about it. It's slithering around my feet. I ain't even tripping. Because that's gonna determine my actions, right? But if I treat a, a gardener like a mamba now, I'm overly fear and got anxiety for no reason. Right. And if I treat a mamba like a gardener, then I'm underestimating the nature of it. So for me, it's about when you talk about something that's unknown at the end of the day, all you have to do is empower yourself with a deep understanding of a thing and it will decrease your fear. Right. But my whole thing with people is, is I just want to make sure that I can trust myself to understand people enough. I trust myself enough to know how much I know about you, how much I don't know about you. And I need to operate based on what I know and based on how much I don't know. And you have to assume that there's always more you don't know about a person than what you do know. Mm. Right? And there's always more you don't know about the world, you don't know about life than what you do know. Right? And so you have to understand that, wow, I'm operating in the darkness. So when you walk in the dark, you will look careful. Unless you learn how to develop those gifts and then you can see in the dark. Mm. I like how you said that 
trust, it, it, it comes from faith. That's how you build up your faith or whatnot, you know. And that just let me know, like, you got to believe in your own imagination. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever you think is possible, it's possible. It can uh, happen, you know. You got to believe in it. What is, but if, if you're doing the right thing, yeah. right, then you can have faith that you're operating as a servant of God, right? I'm doing the right thing, so therefore I have faith things will work out, right? Right? And so... I would rather operate in that, right, than to be fearful of doing the right thing. Mm. So if I'm operating God's way, I know he want me to do the right thing. So therefore, that's what I'm about to do. That's how I'm about to operate. So what am I fearful for? People are always telling me all these warnings and stuff, but I'm doing the right thing. The times that I'm not doing the right thing, then that's when I got to worry. But if I'm doing the right thing, nothing to worry about. I mm. know how the world works. Got another question or no? That was on Yeah, I got another one. I got another one. Got to operate. Got it. it says, uh, we need a high-level conversation with KRS-One. Yeah, that'd be dope, brother Mo Partlow. Um, <laughs> Hold on, with who? <laughs> KRS-One. Oh, all right. All right. We um, trying to figure it out. <laughs> let's see. Do you believe we have free will? Yeah, I believe we have free will. That is by God Trill. Uh, I believe we have free will. And this is why it's so hard for human beings. If we were just programmed like uh, artificial intelligence to do the right thing, there would be no struggle in life. Right. Everything would be ordered for us if we weren't even able to make mistakes. If we weren't able to pick the wrong people. If we weren't able to eat the wrong foods. Yeah. Right. There will be no obese people. There will be no diseases. Right. There will be none of these things. We'll just Damn, live in this nothing. utopia. But we are born with free will. We're born with the ability to operate in the will of God, which is the will of good, which is the will of order. Right. Or we can operate within chaos. The problem is that, you know, I was watching this TikTok. This girl said she took a psychology class and uh, she's like, well, I'm taking psychology class. And shit, it dawned on her that my brain is taking a class on my brain. And how come my brain don't already know about my brain? And she's like, how come my brain can't <laughs> just tell me what each part is? Why am I got to learn? Why do I got to tell my brain what my brain is? <laughs> I thought that hey, was that funny. was my favorite class, uh, my favorite subject in college, though. No cap. But Psychology I, but class. I thought that was funny because I, I think about life. Like, what's the point of life if we ain't got nothing to learn? You know what I'm saying? Uh, if you're born with everything, then there's no point of doing anything. So, you know, we have the ability, right, to go through the human struggle, which gives value and purpose to life. It's the choices that we make. You know what I'm saying? And so your ability to operate and do the right thing, right, that makes you a Muslim. That's what Muslim means, one who submits his or her will to do the will of God. So there's what I want to do and there's what God wants me to do. There's the selfish thing, right? Then there's the good thing. Sometimes they're the both the same thing. So your level of discernment and the principles that you live by, right, will order your steps to where you control your own free will because the most powerful thing any human can do on this planet Earth is control themselves. Yeah. But I think she might be on to something because I know it's Ramadan, right? You know, supposed to be fasting, but my brain telling me then I got to listen to this future album that come out at midnight. <laughs> <laughs> I can't skip it. I got to go on that and is free at will. midnight. That's, that's free will. That's free band's will. That's free I band's know. will, man. I got to listen to it. I'm about to put on that big shine myself. I ain't going to lie to you. I'm about to put on that big shine myself. I see, no, I see him doing, I see <laughs> him doing the album where he at the, uh, the Vegeta chamber. So you don't know nothing about that. So you want to understand. Yeah. That was raw. I like the homage that he was paying. Because the carry. Oh, snap. They coming for us. I don't think we got free will. Let me take one more question. Oh, we got April 8th. 
there's going to be a total, uh, total solar eclipse. It's a powerful day. Spring equinox just came. Got to acknowledge that. Got to acknowledge that before I go to this. And I got to acknowledge something that sister just said. Uh, no, not this one. Have you read the plan from 1915? Nope. On uh, the future of Palestine, I haven't yet. Um, but no, spring equinox. Yeah. So spring, many people, my brother Blue Pill, he be getting at people because he say people be talking all this stuff about New Year's and then when spring comes, nobody celebrate the New Year. No events, no parties, no meditation gatherings, no nothing. Right. And I respect that. Um, they clean up, though. At the yeah. End of the spring clean. Here's the thing, though. For me, uh, spring is not particularly a new year, if you will, because, you know, we still operate on this world's calendar. But what it is, is spring is, it's a new cycle. And there's an energy shift that happened. You know, it happened 319. You know, 19 is always a powerful day for me. It's in alignment with my charts. It's in alignment with me and my spirit. But it's a shift of energy that happens on this planet Earth. And there's corridors and pockets. And if you understand the ley lines of this planet and how we connect it to the cosmos, then you can recognize when a cycle happens. In a simple way, human beings recognize it because a, literally a cycle change, right? If it goes from winter, you don't start planting seeds. That's a physical representation. But there's an energetic shift that happens as well if the cycles are changing, the energy of the planet changes. So this is a time of growth and abundance. This is a time where you you are harvesting, right? And things are growing for you. So now is the time for me to announce new things, for me to start new things, time for me to do all of this new stuff. Winter is not my time where I do those things, yeah. right? And I've seen it instantly already. I've been able to, you know, money start flowing soon as spring hit. Yeah. Money start flowing like you see the first flower grow in doomsday. You feel me? All of a sudden, the stock that I had that was down, it flipped. And it was up. You know what I'm saying? All of a sudden, <laughs> Man, the orders are coming in. Let me borrow $20. Man, I got you. I, I got an IOU for you. Yeah. But, <laughs> <laughs> but all of a sudden, the energy shifted. And I told people earlier yeah. that I'm not going to try to start nothing new. Because, you know, you know we've been working on a huge project on the back yeah, facts, back end. Facts, people can't facts. see. But I, I said, I ain't going to announce or work on nothing new until spring come. Because I don't want to plant, right, in infertile soil. So I want people to take that, understand that this is springtime. And if you wasted your time, January, February, March, and didn't do nothing with it, mm. nothing with your December, that's why you don't have no harvest. Mm. Right? And this is why it's important to understand the cycles. It's plucking season right yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> For all of those that was really planning, all of those that was planning, because you could have just spent the last three months thinking, today you should have a thought. It should be something you're giving birth to now. It should be something you're preparing. It should be something you're nurturing. Mm. Right? So you have to understand you could have been hibernating, uh, keeping your energy together. You could have been working out, getting your body together. You could have been cleaning your environment. Right. You could have been cleaning your spirit and now you should be ready to go and poise to run. You feel me? I'm lucky because I'm in this beautiful Ramadan where I'm strengthening my spirit, my connection to Allah. Right. My connection to self. Mm. Right. And now I'm ready to run this marathon. You know what I'm saying? I don't go against the flow of the river. I'm flowing with it. You feel me? So when you are talking about free will, I'm operating in God's will. I don't want free will. I want God's will. You feel me? And then when you operate with the cycles, that's God's will. God created the planet Earth. He created Earth. You know what I'm saying? That's his will. His will shall be done. So when you operate in the spring, abundance time, multiply. Then in summer, things have heated up. There's an excess amount of energy on the planet Earth. So therefore, people operate differently in the summer because we have more energy than we know what to do with. So there are shifts that happen. Mm -hmm. Things boil over. So what has to happen naturally on this planet? Things have to cool down. We got to fall back. Yeah. Right? Then as we chill, they got to get a little cold right now. Go ahead, relax and hibernate. Then spring come back around and we back in that harvesting season, right? So if you, you have to be prepared, right? Preparation is more important than opportunity. 
Because if the opportunity comes and then you're not prepared, you miss it. You mm. waste it. Mm. <laughs> he gonna drink this tea like, come on. This ain't man. tea. <laughs> what is it? It's coffee. <laughs> it's too late to be drinking coffee. It's yeah, mushroom though, coffee. Man. So look, we gonna end the man to man show. It was a great conversation with you, black man. I'm about to go listen to this future album, and I appreciate y'all for, for tuning in tonight. I'm gonna put on this big shine. <laughs> Nah, but this episode is sponsored to you by Goldwater. Don't forget to get your Superman. Don't forget to stop over at Crown Society. We're 19. What, what, what's the um, website real good? It's Crowns, the number 19. Oh, Crowns Z19. So yeah. we got the black and gold yeah. ones coming back. Oh, yeah. I think we got 100 of them, so it's going to be limited. Yeah, I just want to get them. This is just a Ramadan release. So once this over Ramadan, it's the, the, those go back and disappear. Those are my favorite. Yeah, even uh, the shades. Once we done yeah, with these, you'll done. never see this last style drop. again. Yeah, the so, last drop. Matter of fact, use promo code. We're going to create a creative promo code. Wait for 10 minutes and man use promo man. code uh, <laughs> Ramadan. Uh, Ramadan, yeah. Use Ramadan. Yeah. Wait 10 minutes, though. Wait 10 minutes. Use promo code Ramadan and get 30% off. And don't forget to 33 share this message. 33% off. Don't forget to share this message with the people, man. You know. Man, listen. For real. Um, you know, for us, when, when you got somebody in your life that you care about, this is a gift that you can give them. Send a link. Because they may resonate to what we're talking about. You got some cats that's stuck in their life. You got people that want to develop their gifts, their potential, that's stuck in the streets. You got family that just not reaching their potential. Send them this video. You never know when you change somebody else's life, right? It can, and, and that's simple just by sending out a link, right? Don't, don't, I know you're tired of being the smartest one out your group. You're tired of being the one that's developing themselves because everybody else may pull you down. You're tired of being the one in the light. You don't have to say it. Let us say it. All you have to do is share it. And then if they say thank you, continue to move with them, mm -hmm. right? But if not, they're probably more hurtful than they are helpful. Mm. Be helpful to somebody. Let me go ahead and make sure I put this discount for real because y'all go know y'all gonna hell me about it. Oh, we got the rings on the site too. My favorite ring. Yeah. Oh, if anybody wanna sponsor the show, if you have a brand that you wanna have on the show and you wanna see your brand around here at the fire table, all you gotta do is send Steve a DM, right? Tell them what your brand is, tell them what your budget is, and you can be up here as well. And we give a review on your brand. And that's on Instagram at Steve Jones AFNF. All family, no friends. Steve Jones AFNF. Oh, you know what? I got one last thing, because you said something that disturbed Bro, I'm, me. I'm starving. <laughs> you I'm said something kidding. that disturbed me. What'd I say? You was talking about how you be listening to uh, Sexy Red and Glow Really. You was trying to talk about free bands now. Hold up, wait but a minute. But earlier. what I say? What you say? You said what that say? you were an avid listener. You said you love her new song, Get It Sexy. You know what I'm saying? And I said that I was disturbed. I said I was disturbed. I said I'm disturbed by this generation of men and I don't know what's happening. Hey, first off, I didn't tell you that, but shout out to the homie. You did say that, first of all. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. Bruh, you, somebody in the link you just said, told you, you cash that I dropped tonight. You said, you, bruh, bruh you, I can't even lie, this my song. <laughs> <laughs> I almost cursed, but it's Ramadan. You capped out, blood. I'm not do capped that. out. Don't do that, blood. And I said, what? He <laughs> to my what? I thought it was DMX or something. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it was Get It Sexy. I was appalled. I said, not my dog. He just gave it a free promo line. That's what's up, though, man. No, that Shout was, out to St. Louis, no, though, that man. wasn't what I was St. trying Louis to do. St. Louis taking oh, over. Oh, my God. St. Louis taking over, though. I'll give her that. I'll give her that much, it's though. Bad. But what it's else? bad out here in these streets. Well, now, what you just want to say, though? What, well, I'm for real, though. Like, be honest. That was what <laughs> I was saying. Good night, y'all. I'm out of here. <laughs>